Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, featuring industry thought leaders sharing problem-solving insights to help grow your business and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hi, and welcome to another Let's Talk Divorce Conversation. And on this segment of the show, ladies and gentlemen, I have a family law attorney, Julianne Markovitz, all the way from White Bear Lake. Now, Julianne is the founder of Markovitz Law Office, and she has a wealth of experience in the area of family law. And her topic for day is, you need a divorce, now what? So, if you are a divorcing couple, you might want to consider stopping what you're doing right now for the next 20 minutes or so. Grab a notepad and pen and listen in to what Julianne has to share with us today. So, with that said, let's not keep her waiting any longer. Welcome to the show, Julianne. Well, Stuart, it's an honor to be here, and thank you for having me. And it's an honor for having you on the show as well. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to come and speak with our listeners. So with that said then, Julianne, can you briefly describe the kinds of people who you serve and the various types of situations they find themselves in when they come to you for your help? Absolutely. Family law covers a myriad of topics. And of course, one of the top ones is the divorce, followed closely by what we call a post-decree matter, meaning after you've completed your divorce and you have issues that arise with non-compliance with the decree or changing the decree, all the reason why your initial decree should be done very well. We also handle adoptions, step-parent adoptions, prenuptial agreements, and uh, of course, included in the divorce, uh, oftentimes uh, custody battles and uh, child support and, most importantly, spousal maintenance. Okay, then, Julian. So keeping in mind that anything you share with us today is not legal advice or legal assistance, can you briefly share one of the most common misconceptions that divorcing couples have when they reach that point in their lives when they decide that they need a divorce? Happy to do it. And actually, Stuart, that's an easy answer. Mm. The most common misconception is, this is easy. We can just do it at home. More importantly, when you're in that situation, there's high emotion, there's high conflict, there's worry, and you're thinking with your emotion rather than with your head. And so oftentimes a lot of things occur. Money is moved out of accounts. Things are done out of panic. Uh, there's a demand for a mediation with the parties going together to try to resolve something without lawyers. There's a quick amygdala hijack, the little fight or flight that occurs in your limbic system, and it's let's get this done, let's get this done. And it's all based on fear. And so you wouldn't go to a, you, you wouldn't go to a dentist and say, tell me how to do my own root canal the same way you wouldn't try to do your divorce yourself. There are a lot of nuances and a lot of rules that apply. And that's why you should Seek a lawyer immediately. Okay, that's a great insight, Julian. And based on what you just shared with us, and obviously keeping client confidentiality in mind, share an example of how you've helped someone who came to you with those challenges that you just described, um, one of those misconceptions, and what kind of transformational results you were able to gain for them. That's a great question, Stuart, and actually, thank you for asking it. Several clients have come to me, more than several, in that heightened state of emotion for advice and asking, how about if I go to this mediation and we'll just get everything done and then I'll come to you and you can draft the agreement for us? Or the misconception that why don't both of us come to you and you can help us out on this situation? You didn't get married in five minutes, and you don't get divorced in five minutes. Going to a mediation without a lawyer is one of the worst things you can do. There are a lot of 
rules that govern how marital estates are split. And furthermore, the way a marital estate is split is also oftentimes very, very complex. You have to take tax rules into account that are there are premarital interests involved. Oftentimes there is a prenuptial agreement involved. And so what we see is one of the parties to the divorce coming with a balance sheet that they've put together that misses all of those points. There's a misunderstanding of the concept and there's a rush to do everything themselves and then come to a lawyer and say, can you, can you just memorialize our agreement in every single one of those situations? I have been able to talk my prospective client who has become a client into understanding. This is one of the most important things you're going to do. Slow down. Let's get the information and talk. And we absolutely can mediate because most every case can be settled, but do it with representation. Today's topic, Julian, as you know, is you need a divorce. Yeah. Now what? What do you do? Where do you go from this point on? Now, with that in mind, Julian, and for those divorcing couples wanting to know more, what's the most common but unknown, and I'm sure there are many pitfalls that you've come across in your years of being a family law attorney, but what's the most unknown common pitfall that they might not, but should be aware of? Premarital interests in assets such as someone who bought a house and the other party moved into it and they've already been there for eight years, or the sale of a home and the rollover of those funds into the marital home and the fact that in most states that gives that party the initial rights to keep the homestead. And there is a, there's a calculation that needs to be done where the home thereby isn't split 50, 50. That same rule applies to retirement accounts. If I've worked at Honeywell since 1978 and we got married in 2000, there is a significant carve out of a premarital interest that affects the splitting of those accounts. And I think the biggest unknown pitfall really is, this is easy, we can do it ourselves. Right, so Julian, I had a chance to chat with you a few minutes before we came on air and throughout this um, conversation that we're having now, one thing that I've noticed is your energy, your passion. So let me ask you this, Julian. Imagine it's a Monday morning in Julian's um, world and the alarm clock goes off. Maybe it's five, six o'clock, whatever the time may be. And you have a day's work ahead of you talking with clients, people who are in this unfortunate position of in of finding themselves in divorce. How do you feel then on that Monday morning, Julian? You know what? I feel great. Uh, And let me explain. For years, I was practicing in insurance law, insurance subrogation and defense. And I love the law. And there was a lot of satisfaction there. But primarily, there there was fighting over proceeds and losses and how they would be allocated and paid. When I began practicing family law, I found my niche and I found my passion because it's about people and it's about family and it's about helping someone through the roughest period of their life and guiding them. And I like to tell people that I'm Robin Hood and I guide them through Sherwood Forest (laughs) because it's one of the most scariest things that you're going to do. But it's also, if done correctly, it can be done respectful. It can be done respectfully. It can be done well. And I view myself as part friend, part counselor, part lawyer. There's a lot of parts because I even follow through with my clients and ask them if they're sleeping and if they're eating and if necessary, are they getting counseling? There's the element of the children, which is most important. And there's many, many studies being done and it's ever changing as to how to respectfully divorce and really try to minimize the impact on the children. And one of the best things I tell my clients is remember you're divorcing their dad. They're not divorcing their dad. Very, very important to try to keep things intact, keep it done respectfully and do it by, by setting your best foot forward. 
Well, Julianne, you, you sound so good. You sound so passionate. You sound so genuine. You almost make me feel like going out there, meeting a beautiful woman, getting divorced, just so I can be your client. It's just... oh. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> no, but ser seriously, though, I'm, I'm sure for the listener who's uh, listening, who, who actually is in that unfortunate position of being in a divorce, that they would like to know a little bit more about yourself. You've shared a little bit more of the personal side, but let's just go into a little bit more details about your background, Julianne, and especially in terms of your education and your experience as it relates to the topic of family law. So if you could just share a little bit about that briefly, that would be great for our listeners. Thank you. Sure. Uh, went to undergrad at uh, UW-Eau Claire. My major is in English. And, of course, writing is one of the most important aspects of being a lawyer. I attended Hamlin University School of Law, graduated in 1990. I've been a litigator ever since. Some form of civil litigation. I clerked from my first year on and was lucky enough to get a job at my first law firm where I clerked. I evolved into family law by going through a divorce personally. And I know what it feels like for my clients to be on that side of the desk. Mm -hmm. There were a few issues in my divorce that caused it to be long and protracted. And I have been heavily involved in making certain that that does not happen with my clients. I practice law with compassion. I've been practicing almost exclusively family law since 1995, and I adore my clients. Each one is special, each one is unique, and each one comes with special needs. And what I love the most is after their divorce has been completed, seeing them on Facebook, seeing their Christmas cards come either alone uh, in the Andes on a trip or with their new spouse in a blended family or perhaps in a new relationship. And they have made it through and they have moved on. And that to me is the ultimate reward. So Julianne, if there is somebody out there who's wanting to know more, they wanted to dig a little bit deeper into the topic of divorce. With that in mind, what final thoughts would you like to leave them before we move on to our final question? I think what's most important to know is just make the phone call. Just call the lawyer and go in. In my case, call me and come in because I'm not going to give you a 50-page questionnaire asking you a million questions. We're just going to talk. We're going to have a conversation. I'm going to learn about you and your family. And once you've made that initial step, the fear and anxiety will be greatly reduced by a one-hour free consult where you can ask any question you want and get to know a little bit of the lay of the land and the process. And then you're going to leave with a little homework. But you don't have to go in knowing all of the numbers on your finances, and you don't have to go in knowing the Social Security numbers of your children. That will come. And so I would say prepare for the meeting briefly with your questions. And just come in because we're just going to talk. I'm going to make you some coffee and we're going to talk. Great. So if there is somebody out there that has reach that point where they know they need a divorce or maybe they're even considering divorce or find themselves asking, now what? How can they contact you? Where, where would they reach you, um, Julianne? Well, they can reach me at a very easily remembered phone number, 651-653-4000. They can peruse my credentials, client reviews, and background at markovitzlaw.com. There is also an AVO profile that preceded my website that has approximately 15 reviews online. Great, great. So unfortunately, we are out of time, Julianne. So ladies and gentlemen, 
Don't forget her name. Her name is Julianne Markovic. So thank you so much for sharing so generously today with us, Julianne. You have certainly demonstrated that you're a true educator and advocate for your client's success. So thank you. Thank you, Stuart. It was a pleasure. You are so welcome. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to you, the listener, the divorcing couples out there, for joining us on this very insightful and informative conversation with one of the leading family law attorneys in White Bear Lake today. So make sure you do check her out, give her a call, visit her website, drop her an email. That will be a great place to take the first few baby steps into addressing your situation. So again, I'm Stuart Andrew Alexander, and we'll be back shortly with some more leading divorce professionals in this, our series of Let's Talk Divorce Conversations. So until then, take care, have a great day, and we'll talk real soon. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present, and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.